Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Smoke Learning Channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a great technique for localized warping using extended by cubics and diffuse texture mapping. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Alternatively, if you're watching a podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your internet browser. Now, regardless what job you are working on, there will come a time where reality is just not good enough. I'm not talking about adding CGI. I'm talking about making things look better in the eyes of your clients. For example, I have a setup with a keyed model over a background. Looking at our model, there is really nothing wrong with her in my opinion. However, the client wants to tweak her face. No offence to the model, but we have a job to do. So to follow along, just build the same flow graph in ConnectFX with Action. Double click on the Action node for its controls and bring up a dual screen split with Option 2. Now the area we want to focus on is only her face. So you can double click the Image node and switch the surface type to Extended by Cubic. The problem comes in when you switch to the Vertices menu and start subdividing the surface. For detailed work, you would have to subdivide the surface quite a bit and ultimately this is unworkable. So switch this back to a flat surface and we'll use a different approach. Switch back to Connect Effects with Option Escape and bring up the node bin. Extended by cubic subdivisions use the entire resolution of a surface. So we need to make a smaller surface to perform the adjustments. Drag out a colour frame node and double click for its controls. Set a resolution of 400 by 400 and remember to set the ratio to calculate the width and height. Now select the Action node and press Control N for a new media input. Just connect the colour frame into the red front input. Go back to the Action Schematic with Escape and select the new white surface. We need to texture the surface with the key of the model. Ensure you are in the Action Bin menu. In the Media list, select the input for the model. Now double click on the Diffuse Map node to connect it to the surface object. The surface seems to disappear and only the wireframe remains. This is because the surface is textured with the model's image and the texture respects the original HD resolution and aspect ratio. Both the main keyed object and textured surface object have no transformations in the composite, so things line up without adjusting any transform values. However, you need to position it over her face to work in that area. Double click the axis of the textured surface and move it over her face. The problem you are now seeing is that the texture is locked to the surface. In order to make this work, any transformations you do to the surface object must be inverted on the diffuse texture map. So if the surface is moved up, the texture must move down. This will keep things in alignment as you position the surface for localized warping. Now you can enter the values manually each time you do something, but that will probably drive you completely mad. So a better approach is to use expressions on the different types of transformations. Starting with Position. Double click on the Surface Axis node. Right click on the X Position channel and choose Copy in the pop up menu. Select the axis for the diffuse map. Right click on the X Position channel and choose Link Channel. The dotted line under the X Position slider indicates an expression on this animation channel. Let's repeat the same for the Y Position channel. Select the surface axis and copy the Y position channel. Next, select the axis of the diffuse map and link the Y position channel. Now remember that I said the position of the texture needs to be the inverse of the surface. Click the Animation button and press Shift Tab to focus on the selected channels. The E indication tells you that there are expressions on these channels. When you select the X Position channel, the expression will appear at the bottom of the animation window. Currently, the expression states that it will copy the exact values of the other axis. In order to invert this, click the Expressions button or press SHIFT close square bracket. 
The expression editor opens and we can edit the text. Firstly, we want to take the sum or total value of this expression. So place round brackets around the current expression. To invert the sum of this value, just place a minus at the beginning of the expression. Press ENTER to confirm. So any value generated by the exposition of the surface object will be inverted in this channel. Please go ahead and repeat the same steps for the Y channel. Open the expressions editor, put the expression in brackets and place a minus at the front of the expression. Click the animation button to return to the main menus. If you click the surface object axis in the action schematic, you can move the surface in the view. Note how the texture stays in place even though you are moving the surface. To repeat, whatever transformation is applied to the surface is inverted back onto the texture that prevents it from slipping. Now that was position and this is always measured in pixels. In the next video, we'll create the expressions for rotation and scaling. We'll massage the extended by cubic into place and track the lot. Don't miss part 2 of Beautifying with Localized Warping. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Smoke Learning channel for future videos.